What's up, guys? Bonafide Hustler here. Breaking profit in the house. Retro aficionado. Jason T. Smith here. What's happening, everybody? Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Green Room Hangout number 11 of Season 2. And today we're going to talk about the future of eBay with Jason T. Smith. I'm the Bonafide Hustler. I reside in Austin, Texas, and I flip stuff I find from garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, thrift stores, swap meets, and I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and my antique booth. So that's who I am. I'm also one of the admins of the Green Room paid Facebook group, and I'll toss it over to Rake and Profit. What's up? Thanks, Chris. So I'm uh, another one of the Green Room admins or, you know, part of the staff, like Chris likes to always say. Um, I'm from Connecticut. Just got done with a 32-day thrift store adventure. Pretty much traveled all the way up and down the East Coast. Um, primarily selling Amazon FBA right now from thrift stores, garage sales, pawn shops, and a few other places. I've uh, been doing this for about three years now. Quit my job, never looked back, and I uh, love every moment of it. So excited for another uh, show, and I'm going to pass it off to my main man, Yong. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Retro Aficionado, also known as Young. Live in San Jose, California, and I do eBay, Amazon <clears throat> FBA, Craigslist, Antique Booth, and any other way I can make money. Jason, who are you? <laughs> well, I, I turn tricks on the corner of uh, Windmill and Eastern, and uh, oh, oh, wrong, wrong, wrong hangout. Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> now I sell on. I've been selling on eBay since the uh, late '90s, and I've been on Amazon almost as long. And uh, I also have an antique booth at an antique mall and Craigslist and uh, anywhere I can do a hustle. Okay, so you heard it right there. Today's primary objective is to figure out what the future of eBay is through the eyes of Jason T. Smith. Now, um, Jason, we'll, go, we'll kind of go right into Well, actually, before we go into it, it's important to do a sound check just to make sure that we sound okay. We wouldn't want to go through an entire show sounding like crap. Um, we want to make sure that you guys can stay focused on whatever we're going to talk about, but it comes down to sound as one of the primary things. Raken, I know I sound pretty good. What do we? Let's let's ask the people in the comment feed what is going on with the sound. Are we sounding pretty good? Jason, say a couple words. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday nights. We are oh. hanging out here without sleeves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go into the... Comment feed right here. We have Thrifty Treasures, Cody Orgil, um, Jameson Filippi. We have Retro, Michael, my, I mean Mike Decker, Ben H, Indie Game Labs, Francisco, bunch of people in here. Peggy Smith, Virginia Nat TV Dad, Bullfrog in the Biz, Hot Halloween Props, OJC321, Omar Kassem, bunch of people. So do we sound pretty good? Peggy Smith says we sound good. So does Virginia. Okay. Oh, the first question of the night. So we have already gone off track. Bullfrog in the Biz is now asking, <laughs> Jason, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, snap. Well, I have great friends, and uh, they know my love of rum. And last week alone, I got five uh, bottles of rum as gifts. And, <laughs> and this is uh, Brugal, and uh, my friend and partner in my, uh, my YouTube show gave me a bottle of this, and I happen to love it, and she just grabbed it by pure luck. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. Nice. So when it comes down to rum, like what is your favorite? Let's let's go even more off track. Let's do it. Why not? If when it comes down to rum, what is your most like? What let's say top three favorite rums of sleeveless Jason T. Smith? Like what is it? <laughs> uh, I have to say for just a go-to on a daily, if I'm having just like a light rum and coke, uh, it would be Sailor Jerry. Sailor's kind of like Captain, but way better. Uh, and then if I'm going, uh, if I want to celebrate something, I bust out my Cuban rum, Havana Club. That is the best. Cuba Libre you will ever have, and then uh, for number three, I gotta go. Uh, geez, it's a, it's a it's actually a tie. Zaya and uh, Ronza Kappa 23. They're two totally different rums, but they're kind of my go-to. We're not going to the most expensive rum in my uh, collection, but not the cheapest. Nice middle of the road rums, and uh, you cannot go wrong with any of those rums. Now, what was the second one that you said? Uh, Havana Club. It's Cuban, totally illegal, but back in the day, you used to be able to buy it on eBay. So I could just lay on my couch, push purchase, and then it would show up like a week later in my front door. Ah, so the good old days. It's illegal. How do you have it? How'd you get it? eBay. Oh, you got it back in the day from eBay. Okay. Yeah, but just... also, I happen to have friends who come down from Canada just throw in their luggage. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, um, so we have a lot of people saying, dang, this is cool. You guys got on Periscope beforehand. Periscope is awesome. Slam that like button, David Hotley. So thank you very much. Um, and thanks to Steven the Rabbit. 
Brandon Page because of the Facebook, I mean, the Periscope stuff. So cool. Um, okay, so let's uh, take it from the top real quick. Um, your mean, business, Jason, right? It is, is it? your business. Is it 100% eBay? Is it 70% eBay? And what percentage of this thing is Antique Booth and what percentage of it, what percentage of it is eBay? Antique Booth is very small. Um, uh, I'm at a nice antique mall, but it doesn't get as much traffic as some of the other ones in Vegas. So, you know, that's a few hundred bucks here and there. It's nothing major, but, you know, I move some stuff that wouldn't move otherwise. Uh, and then I would say eBay. So um, split it off, I'd say eBay is about 80%. Amazon's about 20%. Okay, so you do Amazon as well. I was talking about the antique mall as well. So you have antique mall, Amazon, and eBay? Okay, and when you do Amazon, are you talking FBA or are you talking merchant, merchant Fulfilled or what? Merchant Fulfilled. Screw that FBA stuff. You guys are all losers. Come on. Oh, man. I am just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I just uh, I just like getting CD collections uh, like Reagan was telling me about his he just got. I list them real quick, Merchant Fulfilled. They sit on a shelf alphabetical. It's easy to just pull them and send them, and I've always sold a ton that way. So in the last week, I've sold a $50, a $40, a couple $30. So when you get CD collections, Jason, um, do you have a cutoff? Let's say you're just scanning rapidly. Like, do you have a cutoff? You're like, I'm not sending in, I'm not merchant fulfilling any of these that are sub 20. Like, what is your cutoff? Everyone's got the cutoff. Look at Raken, by the way. I know. Look at him showing off. What a, we don't what a, what a brick of CDs. <laughs> he just showed us like 50 jewel cases. That's all I, I saw, really. <laughs> got a bunch of those. Yeah, they're all empty. <laughs> they're all, they're all, they're all just a. Uh... <laughs> I'm um, just a big fraud. <laughs> um, so yeah, Jason, go back to my question. Do you kind of? Two can two can play that game here. Here, here, look, 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 look. Oh, look. Hey, hey, look. Oh, look, they're all empty. Oh. No, man, those are twenty dollars CDs. What are you talking about? Uh, my my cutoff is is ten. Now I won't go hunting for ten dollars CDs, but if I buy a collection, ten is my low end limit. I won't go. I won't sell anything below ten. And, and that took me a long time. Well, back in the day when there wasn't a ton of competition and uh, when Half.com was actually pretty good, I didn't mind doing like tons of $3 CDs because you make a buck or two on the shipping. Uh, and then one day I'm like, what am I doing with these $3 CDs? It takes just as long to list a 50 as a, as a 3. Like, goodbye threes. I think I must have gotten a negative off a $3 CD. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? If I'm going to catch a negative, I'd rather catch it on a $50 item than a $3 item. Okay. Raken, uh, you got a huge amount of jewel cases. At what point do you draw draw your line with the jewel cases? At twenty dollars, thirty bucks? Like where is it? Um <clears throat> so pretty much for me, for my whole like lot, I paid three hundred twenty four dollars for about a thousand CDs. So a lot of them were ten, twenty dollar CDs, but I'll throw up a six dollar CD FBA if I'm only in it for twenty cents and I got it in the lot because I can still make a few dollars off of it. Um, but I'm not going to go hunting for CDs less than 10 bucks if I'm just going to buy a single one. Yeah, I've always kind of wondered why the pull fee on FBA is so big on small items. Can you answer that for me? I, I don't know. But like, there's little things like VHS tapes and like blank media. Young, you maybe you know, but the pull know. fee just seems to be ridiculously high on these really <clears throat> small, stupid items. Like, anyway... Well, I mean, Wolfie, which is like the little robots running around grabbing it, and then like a dude has to go through the bin, <coughs> pick out your skew and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, blank media you can't really buy in the stores anymore, really, right? So, I mean, I know I know some stores you can still go and buy like VHS tapes and stuff, like blank ones, but um, really, I mean, no one really sells blank VHS tapes anymore, right? Um, some so, certain ones. So they, so they got to go on Amazon and uh, uh, buy them. Right. Well, um, I still can't figure out why that pull fee is so expensive for some of that stupid stuff. That little stuff. That's anyway. why I do Merchant Fulfilled. No pull fee here. Yeah, pull fee. <laughs> um, lots of fees. FBA adds up fast. That's from Thrifty Treasure. So, yeah, by the way, guys, if you're watching this show right now, it is live. And um, if you take a look to your – probably your right, there's a comment feed. Now, you can put comments in there, and you can ask Jason questions, even about his room. We don't care. And, um, you know, it's all about that. We're going to get into this eBay conference thing pretty quick here. Um, because I really want to learn a lot about what Young and both Jason experienced at the eBay. I mean, you can call it a summit, but it was a 20-year. Isn't it a 20 anniversary thing, Young? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So eBay's been around for 20 years, huh? Wow. That's unbelievable. I mean, they'll, they'll be legal to drink with me next year. <laughs> 
wow comes from Raken because Raken, you hold eBay near and dear to your heart because you started with eBay, right? Or Craigslist, then eBay, correct? Yeah, but I mean, eBay was like the thing that really made everything possible for me. Like, that's what really gave me my success and allowed me to really ultimately quit my job and move away from that forever. So I, you know, as even though I'm not selling on eBay right now, I, I have nothing really bad to say about it. I think it's a great opportunity to make money on. Okay. And I do want to ask the people out there that are watching right now, watching live and commenting, there are a lot of comments coming through. Even Jason T. Smith is in the comment feed, guys. Um, is What is your business? What is the breakdown versus eBay, Amazon, um, maybe an antique booth or maybe other forms? You know, I want to see what other people's um, you know, composition or their pie chart kind of thing looks like. So go ahead and put that in. I'm just really curious at this point. Mine is... Um, I couldn't even begin to think about it now because it's going to like rack my brain. But... Um, Reagan, you're mostly FBA, right? Amazon now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Res reselling wise, yeah, it's it's 100% Amazon FBA. I still do um, a good amount of bikes on Craigslist, though. Okay. We got 80 20 on Jason. Okay, so, Jason, um, let's, let's talk about this eBay summit, right? Let, let's kind of try to paint the picture in people's heads about where is this thing held? Is it a gigantic place, and how many people attended the thing in the first place? Uh, it was all held in my hotel room, which was uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> you had to take turns coming in and out. Uh, it was at the uh, San Jose Convention Center, and I think there was 2,000 attendees wow. and, I mean, hundreds of eBay employees. Maybe on the day of the first day, maybe maybe 1,000 eBay employees. I mean, the, the, the clapping tunnel was two to three deep from the one uh, – the one showroom, uh, the one ballroom to the other, and just it was so many people, and it was, it was such an amazing event because not only did you hear uh, the changes and you get excited because at any event you get pumped up, you feel the energy, but this one was different. It, you know, when they brought Pierre out, Pierre's the founder of eBay. Oh, that was uh, awesome. Yeah, he was a surprise guest, and so when they brought him out. It, it, it was already at this peak, I thought, and then it just went off the charts. Like I was like, this is insane. And I got a chance to say hi to Pierre, and I got a picture with him and, and talk to him for a second. And so for somebody who's been on the platform that long, to, to meet him and say, hey, and, you know, I connected with him for a few seconds. He built a house just up the street. I am looking up the road where he built a house, and he doesn't live there anymore, but I'm like, hey, are we still neighbors? <laughs> and he's like, where do you live? And I'm like, ah, oh, the corner of Eastern and Windmill. And he goes, oh, I'm in uh, I'm in Hawaii full time, but we were neighbors. I go, yeah, we're pretty close. So if we ever meet again, not that you would forget this mess, but if we ever meet again, you'll probably have that connection. Like, oh, that's the big hairy bald dude that lived near me. You know, I was wondering, I was wondering why someone worth nine billion would be living in Henderson, but now, okay, but now he's in Hawaii. Okay. Oh, I'll tell you why, young, because there's no oh. state income tax here, bro. Ah, oh, that's right, that's right. Okay. And he built like a 50,000 square foot house. That's right. So, okay. Jason, one of the things that maybe you should do is like send him one of your cool tiki cups. Like just saying, hey, man, thanks for your company. It really helped me like do whatever. And uh, this is primarily what I sell in your company, but I would like to give you one. Like, I mean, you never know. Isn't he partnering up? Isn't his company kind of partnering up with you a little bit at this point right now? <clears throat> oh, yeah. And, and I did that with Devin. So Devin is the, the, the new and current CEO. He's been with the company for a few years, and Devin and I met when I was uh, uh, flown to, uh, to, uh, to D.C. to talk to Congress on behalf of all online sellers. They bring in, they do a fly-in every spring, and they bring in a, um, an eBay seller from each state, and I met Devin. He had just got hired at eBay, and we, uh, we talked to a senator together, and during lunch, he's like, man, you did a great job, and then I end up getting one of the senators to change their mind on the Internet tax bill. But when we were sitting at lunch just chit-chatting, he, uh, I, I never wear a suit anywhere. I, if you die, I'm not wearing a suit. If you get married, I'm not wearing a suit. But in the halls of Congress, I wore a suit. But under that suit, I had a long sleeve Hawaiian shirt on because I am still me. And so he was talking about my shirt, and he happened to say, I don't own a Hawaiian shirt. I'm like, who doesn't own a Hawaiian shirt? So I sent, uh, I sent Devin a Hawaiian shirt and one of my cocktail glasses. And so we, even though we were we had that great connection, we became kind of say friends. I mean, we're not you know bowling together or anything, but you know Devin Devin knows me really well, and uh, and we've done other things together. So you know, any chance you can to make an impression on somebody that 
you know, it, this is going to sound very shallow, but that could benefit you in the future, and, and not necessarily monetarily, but, you know, I've had a call on some eBay employee friends who I needed a favor for myself or someone else, but I've done enough for them that I could make that call and go, hey, can you help me out here? And they always say, yeah, because I'm always there for them when they like, hey, can you go talk to our interns or can you go to D.C.? Absolutely, because I believe in the platform I sell on. I feel they're my partner, and if they need me to do something, I'm there. That's pretty cool. So I'm you know, the, I'm the complete opposite. Every time I go there, I get escorted out by the security. <laughs> <laughs> Your picture's on the wall, you know, like this guy goes. Well, see, Yong, you have to actually wear sh like pants when you go there. You know that. So anyway, um, just kidding. Um, okay, so there's some people on the comment feed talking about their their uh, you know their business spread here. We got eBay 100% from flipping finds. We have Brandon Page 90% 98% eBay, 2% Amazon. Debbie Parker 100% eBay, 100% um, but trying to break into FBA. That's Virginia. Um, complete opposite of Jason. Retro aficionado, 80% FBA. Wait a minute. You said 80% FBA, 90% eBay, and 10% Craigslist. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know addition, Young, by the way? <laughs> like, why does your pie, your pie is all, like, jacked up looking? It has, like, a fourth dimension to it, dude. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so we'll skip that one. Um, okay, so so nice in Hawaii. Kauai is the best island. Oh, that's retro again. Cool. Um, and Jason T. Smith says, I have a nice house. Okay. Um, my husband was not a suit guy either, but I buried him in his favorite bicycle jersey and a pair of Castelli shorts. Oh, cool. That's I'm cool. sorry you buried your husband, Julie, but good on you for putting him in what he loved. That's exactly. why yeah. I fully agree with that. Yep. I will not. I will not be buried in this. Well, I will not be buried. My ashes are going to be spread. But when I, when I am uh, when I'm burned to a crisp, I will not be in a suit. That's for damn sure. <clears throat> okay. So you heard it first here, guys. Um, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> and we just we just went off the trail. <laughs> yes, we're about to get on track, man. Um, okay. So this thing's held in a gigantic convention center. You get a bunch of people. The energy is strong, right? Um, uh, off the charts. I, I've been to events for years, and this was, you know, I, I was um, I was Instagramming from it, and I I put it's just it's it's like when Steve Jobs was alive, and it was an Apple event. Hashtag no turtleneck needed because Devin when Devin came out and said here's the future, I felt like that. You know, if you're an Apple fan and you watch those events, you get even if you're not there, you get all pumped up. And and man, being in that room. And uh, e eBay brought me, uh, they put a team together of uh, 15 eBay influencers, people who sell on the platform, and there was like six criteria, and, the, and the, the three big ones were had a following, had a social media presence, and the biggest one was put out accurate information, and that's the key, that when I talk, I talk accurately. And so they brought 15 of us down, and we all had safe seats in the front three rows, and it was just... Uh, Absolutely amazing. So, and I didn't realize that you know me saying, "Yeah, I'll absolutely do it," got me a front row seat. So I was very excited. So a front, I'm, I'm I mean, there's no more front excited. row. There was no more front row than you. That you are the first row. Yeah, we were. We were the, the first three rows were all the influencers and uh, anybody behind me. I'm so sorry you couldn't see him. I so know. Wait, I where was be... Young? Where was Young? By the way, huh? I mean, I was by the bathroom. That's what it <laughs> <laughs> Are you in like the overflow room where they put like a, a Sony Watchman on the bathroom counter and you have to be in there? They put me by the bathroom, man. They're like, here, sit here. Jeez. Well, that's okay. Well, that means when it's when it's all over, Yong gets to go to his car first and take off quicker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this, how many days was this thing, Jason? Two days and um, two full days. And then the, the first, uh, so, you know, it was Thursday. And then Thursday night they had a giant, giant party. And uh, the my only complaint about the entire party was it could have been an hour longer, I felt. And it was like <laughs> two or three hours long. So, I mean, they were really pulling all the stops. But, you know, usually you get to a party or a wedding or some event where by the end there's like two drunks slow dance on the floor, ain't nothing going on, time to call it. But this was like, we should keep going. I mean, yeah. we, there, was, there was people dancing on the dance floor and just having a blast. And, you know, it was like, Party's over, and I'm like, oh man. Darn. <laughs> so the party did it have like was adult were adult beverages present? Yes or no? Oh, more than you oh. can ever. I've never seen so many bars in an event in my life. I mean, usually you walk into an event, and you know, at a hotel they got the 
little satellite bars. There'll be like three or four, and you always got a line. There had to have been 20, and I never found any of them with a line. Now, not not everybody drinks, but uh, and and they did not have they did not have deep crappy liquor either. Oh wow! So was the tab comped for a certain time period or no? No, it was all comped. Wow. Oh really? And, and for those of you who were him and hawing about going, if you signed up early, it was sixty five bucks to go. Uh -huh. If you signed up late, it was ninety five bucks to go. And when you got there, they gave you a hundred dollar eBay gift card, so it was free. Are you so, uh, What? Dang man! Well, that's crazy. So here's the thing, though. See, I posted about the uh, the convention in the green room three or four months ago. I was like, hey, if you guys, if any of the members want to go, contact me. And I never heard from anyone. So, don't say you guys didn't know about it. So, if you signed up at 65, you made 35, and they were testing out a new service. If you signed up for the new service, they gave you another $20 gift card. Not everybody got it, but I got that. And then it was free food and booze for two days. Oh, yeah. Amazing. It was amazing. And, you and should, my, wow. my dumbass, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, uh, we have to pay for our drinks. I'm like, hey, Steve, man, hey, I'll pay for uh, I mean, Jason, I'll pay for your drink. Oh, He's no. Like, oh. Like, yeah, that's I right. Like I forgot idiot. you said that. I thought you were kidding. You were serious. No, I'm like, not <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hey, man, drinks are on me. I'll get the first round. You're like, huh? What, what are you talking about? I think I think I said drinks on me for everyone. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Young. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, when we were in the green, so in the green room that one given weekend or whatever, there was a lot of updates coming from Yong's side as well, um, and we saw Yong and Pierre in a picture and all this kind of stuff. So I, my guess was Yong, I mean Pierre was there in that whole like party thing. Yes, walking around, Jason, or no? Yeah, he was, and he's not a huge fan of like I'm right at home in a giant crowd. Everyone wants to say hi, and you know. He is not a fan, and there was a point where people were had seen him. He, I think he was getting a cocktail, seen him, like, can I have a picture? And the next person, like, I have a picture. And then they moved him away a little bit, and I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever bump into him again, and I got to make I gotta make it happen. So I made it happen. So I got up there, and because I, and he was standing with Devin, and because I knew Devin, it was an easy approach for me because Devin was like, hey, big guy, how you doing? And, and so we had that quick conversation, and I took a picture with him. But... I, I'm not the kind of guy to be like, oh my god, I sell on your site, and let me tell you what's wrong with it. No, I, I got <laughs> we had a few words, we took a picture, and I moved because other people might want pictures. He might want to escape at some point, but the people that don't have any like social filter, and then just like, you know, I, I've taught classes where we're at the thrift store, and somebody's like, oh my god, I'm a huge fan. <clears throat> Great, come over, say hi. Hey, can I tell you about ten things? Uh, really not right now. You know, all these people pay to be here with me. So here's my email. Drop me a note. I'll be more than happy to chat with you later. But you know, just have that thought that, you know. But but if I'm just hanging out like here in Vegas, I'm hanging out at Frankie's. And you want to come hang out? I uh, will sit and talk all night. That's fine. Just know where you're at. You know, kind of gauge your your audience and what's happening around you. Those are some good tips, man. Good social tips there, man. I think. I just don't think everyone's going to be able to do that. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are just going to be like, oh, my God, no way, you know. Now, now, let me say, on the other end of that, I had somebody take a picture of me about a month ago that was a fan and was afraid to say hi, so I caught them taking <laughs> sneaky pictures of me. <laughs> wow. They were super short, and I was pretty sure they were, and I walked by, and I looked over, and their phone was open to taking pictures, and... I, I didn't see him take. I didn't specifically see him take a picture, so I just moved on. And about two days later, a guy who I know uh, through my group said, "Hey, was there a creepy little Asian guy taking sneaky pictures of you two days ago in Vegas?" I go, "Yeah, there was." And, he, and I'm, you know, my brain's racking. I'm like, Where are "Those pictures? At? How's this? How's that? how does he know?" He goes, "That was my husband. He was too afraid to say hi." And I was with some other friends having fun. I'm like. Oh, please, if you see me and you want to say hi, come say hi. Hell, hell yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And then he posted the pictures, and they, you know, I was having a fun day with friends, but all the shots he got had me looking like I was a deranged, thrifting lunatic because it was all just, like, quick shots of me looking like this, like... <laughs> I'm so, like, no, 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 I'll pause. I'll, 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 I'll pose with you. I'll smile. I'll give you a little hammer. I'm like, whatever. That was pretty funny. 
Uh, Virginia Nat Natividad says, I would be the shy creeper type. I'm just trying to get over that, though. <laughs> oh, come say hi. I'll give you a big hug. We'll take pictures laying out. <laughs> Gosh. Yang won't even give me a hug, so I guess you would. That's cool. One day I'll be in Vegas. I'll, I'll, I'll turn in my hug card, my Jason um, hug card in. we, we, we got to get Steve out to Vegas because he's never been, man. I'm still shocked. but I may but be I, out there in, uh, in January. I might be out in that area, so we're going to have to stay in touch for sure, man. When you say that area, it's Vegas or nothing. It's all desert. <laughs> what do you mean that area? Well, I'm going to be rolling out with Resale Rabbit. Not sure if you know who he is, but um, we're going to be rocking out together, so we're going to make sure to be out there, staying that live. we got to get out there for sure. Vegas it is. I think you'll like it, Rick, and you're, you're a man of – you know, trying to get all these experiences under your belt, and I think you're going to like that place. place hey, awesome. Jason even said, man, like, you, you know what, I'm not, I got even, I even got a picture, man, for Jason when he came back. I see man, you that, you got an art of, you've got some art. <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm trying, trying to improve, give me some credit. <laughs> Thrifty Treasure says, Green Room Meetup in Vegas, <laughs> with a smiley face, so. Sweet. Yeah, I need to answer that question, too. Green Room Meetup, probably going to be in the spring, probably going to be Austin, Texas, but anyway, that's just like what we think right now, because it was a little really hot last year. You know what's funny? Um, they thought that uh, I think we had nights or evenings of about 88 and highs of like 100 during our summers. So Jason, what are the, what's the summer like in Las Vegas, oh, let's sorry. say in July? What is it like over there? Is it like a low of 100 and a high of like 200? What is it? Yeah, there's uh, there's two weeks every summer that, uh, that just suck. Like I grew up in Cleveland. There are six months of gray rain and, and, and uh, snow. In Vegas, there's two weeks that you want to kill yourself, and then the rest of the 50 are just fine. Uh, and this year, the two weeks were in June around the eBay radio party. So it was like 115 to 120 every day for two weeks, and you just you want to kill yourself. And after that, it's just kind of normal. But uh, it, and, it, and it's always rotating. Some we, sometimes those two weeks have been in August. Sometimes they've been in July. been here 11 years. But uh, if you happen to be here during those two weeks, I'm so sorry. Anytime else, you're okay. Uh, and then starting tomorrow, it's going to be like low 90s, high 80s for the next two months. I can't wait. That's cool. So um, let's go back to this uh, eBay thing real quick. Um, now, you got word of the future of eBay itself, right, and where it's headed and uh, some of the things, some of the actions that they're taking and how it's going to directly affect people like me, you, um, and those that sell on eBay. So let's take it from the top. If you could whittle it down, how many... Real changes are there, Jason. If you could just, you know, count on your fingers, what do you think? Or if there's like a prescribed, like, okay, there's three things I want to talk to you guys about. What do you, what does it come down to? One, two, three, five. How many things really are changing? There, there's three, three major, major, major things. And I'll start with the returns because actually they had a webinar today with Griff and two of the uh, two of the team who are in charge of the return uh, process. And so they showed you how it would work. And up until today. Uh, even though we'd seen some stuff, and I, I, being an influencer, I got literature ahead of time, I thought that this is how it would work. And then today I saw it work, and that's exactly how it would work. So if you've, ever, if you've ever had to return something to Amazon, and I did uh, a couple weeks ago. I bought some headphones. Uh, I saw them in the store. I loved them. They were way cheaper on Amazon. I bought them on Amazon. When I got them, I ordered the wrong headphones. So I started the return flow. They, they said, why you return it? And I basically checked off, I screwed up, whatever their verbiage is. I'm sure it isn't screwed. Uh, and they said, okay, here's a label. Drop it off at UPS. And so I spit out the label, charged me six bucks. That's fine. I screwed up. The second I dropped it at UPS uh, and they scanned it in, I saw my email. I got my refund from Amazon. And I'm like, that's how returns should work. It's that easy. And so eBay realized the return uh, procedures were... Not real uniform and horrible, and they're still saying you don't have to take returns. And, man, if you don't take returns, you're going to lose every day of the week. And I don't want to hear no crying. I don't know of any business right. that doesn't take returns. You know, I bought a T-shirt last spring. Uh, I went to a spring training Cleveland Indians game. I bought a T-shirt from MLBshop.com, get a new Cleveland Indians T-shirt. Their return policy is 365 days. That's insane. Wow. I mean, think about LLB. They'll take they'll take shit back whenever you whenever you've had it for thirty years. They'll they'll give you a new one or fix it, you know. And so to not have a return policy, especially when you sell used goods, is really nutty to me because you want your customers to be happy and to return. Because also, it's not just my customers; 
it's your customers, it's your customers, it's your customers. And if we're sharing space in the same mall and you suck, I don't want you there. I want the people coming to my mall to be happy to shop. So the returns flow has been very haphazard at eBay, and now here's the new one. They're going to they're gonna tell the customers and be able to say, hey, i got to return this. There's going to be 11 reasons, like it doesn't fit, it's broken, it's missing a piece. But half are kind of by remorse, like didn't like the color, whatever, and half are, did you screw up? And you can set up parameters. So if the customer says this, then I am going to pay for the return shipping. If they say this, they will pay for it. So you have to do a little bit of work, but once you set them up, you're all kind of good. Uh, also, you can set up parameters. Is this item under 10 bucks? Because if I accept the, if I accept that they want to return it, I'd rather just refund them and, and move on. So you can set up all these kind of parameters, and but what's nice is you can have it spit out a... Uh, shipping label, because that was the biggest hang-up. Some customers are near post offices. They're not like us. They don't sell every day. They don't ship every day. Shipping to them is foreign, and so for them to be able to print out a label and go, that's it. That's easy. And so they're making it so the customers are happy, because look, I don't care what people say, what people complain about. No matter what you buy and where you buy it, some days you've got to return something. Yeah. You know, I bought the wrong headphones, so that one was on me. Yep. But, you know, Walmart, they have a policy, whatever it is. They're pretty liberal, 90 days, 120. Hey, we won't give you money back, but here's a here's a credit to go to shop. Walmart has never kicked me out, and they've never said never come back. Can and I so see? that's their mentality. People, people go have a return. They're like, I'm blocking that guy. He returned this. And, you know, I find in selling my used goods, 50% of the time when I get a return, I sell an item for more money than I sold it for originally. Hey, okay, Jason, so um, let's go ahead, Drake. I'd ahead. like to say real quick, on Amazon, I know on Amazon when you're selling, um, for example, like if you return an item too many times, like Amazon, they might even kick you off of Amazon for returning it too many times. There's something I heard, I'm not sure the legitimacy of that, but on eBay, is there something that's going to protect you against you know, the customers out there, the one out of every thousand customers who are just trying to take advantage of people and they're just returning it, they're swapping out, you know, fakes for reals and stuff like that. Is there anything they have in, in place for that that you know of? Or? Yeah, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said one out of a thousand because here's the other problem too. Like with anything that we do, we're going to have the one problem customer. We're going to have the one return. And I, all sellers, until I can break them of this mentality, Forget about the thousand happy that were before that one return, that one pay. You know, deal with it, but move on. People spend way too much energy on the one return. Yeah. And you know what? Last Christmas, I opted into the 90-day return policy, and I got zero returns. So don't be afraid of it. But, yes, they do protect us because they have a, in the flow for the seller, there is a button to click, uh, uh, report buyer. And what they're doing is if you feel that, like, look, I got – and, I, and, I, and you know, if you watch every show I'm on, yes, you've seen this before, I sold a political shirt. This is not me indicating what my politics are. Just I found it at a thrift store. I sold it. Customer got it and said, hey, man, the, the decal's blurry. And I'm like, man, it wasn't blurry, but if you feel it's blurry, that's cool. Send it back. But when he sent it back, I got the shirt back. So it's the two bushes that says Dumb and Dumber. But here's the problem. The shirt I sent was blue. <laughs> this is very red. So he bought a few of these and picked the wrong seller. Now, I don't think he did it on purpose, but there is going to be in the flow me to report that the seller, the buyer screwed up. And if it is a habitual buyer doing this, they can keep these metrics and go, okay, Raken, you're out of here. You're abusing the buyers. You're mm. abusing uh, being a buyer. And I say two things. You always have to report it if it's happening, but don't, as a seller, don't abuse it either because that isn't right either. But, but if you have, you know, the example they showed today, a buyer returned saying it was missing a part. And when the seller got it back, it wasn't missing that part. So it was truly buyer remorse, and since the buyer wasn't honest, the seller could then report the buyer, and then there would be, you know, that little, like, notch in their belt. So if they did this time after time after time, there's going to be a point where eBay says, bye-bye, you can't be here no more. So, Jason, that metric thing actually is there already. Even pre-conference, it was there, right? Because I know I've seen it. Block buyer, report buyers, 
It's there, there is, for... but it's going to be right in the return flow. Okay, so okay. So it's going to be okay. super easy. It's going to be like this giant glowing button. And don't use it just because it's there, please. But use it when you have to. Because okay. with anything in life, if you, you know, boy who cried wolf, the time you need it, if you're abusing it, it won't work. Okay. That's cool, man. Okay, so at least we know that it's going to be more prominent is what you're saying, right? But at the same time, we all have our duties as sellers. Don't abuse it because it's not there for abuse. It's there for really reporting that one out of a thousand that it's really out there trying to do this to everybody, right? Yeah, and like I said, this guy who sent me this T-shirt back, in his flow, he just picked the wrong seller. So he screwed up, but because I showed eBay that, hey, I sold the blue, he sent me a red because they held my funds, obviously. And once I showed him that, they were like, okay, cool. So they gave me my money back. Because I came to eBay non-emotionally with the facts. That's always the key. Come with the facts. Okay. So now that we've heard the first thing, guys, out there in YouTube land that are watching the show live, you know, give us your uh, feedback on, you know, what you think about that. Um, we have some people talking saying, like, looks like I'm going to have to take re returns now. Um, Travis Jameson is some random person that we're looking at here. I've had quite a few returns for something broken, and I got it back and worked fine. Um, Malu Jimmy, who's out of Houston, Texas. Even if you list no returns, eBay can request return and ding you, right? I agree with Jason is saying take the returns. Um, let's ask, answer that first question. Even if you list no returns, can eBay request a return and ding you? Yes, right, or no? Well, yeah, because it, it's it, if it's by remorse, then no. And we had this discussion yesterday. If it's outside your window, eBay will back you. But what I always say is take care of your customer. Right, so right. some Somebody said, hey, I was return after my window. And I they didn't give me all the details. So also, when you're in my group, if you're coming with me with a, a question or a problem, give me all the details. They never said how far outside their window. Is it one day or is it six months? Because my answer will greatly be different if it's six months. Six months, I'm pretty much like, all right, whatever. You, you know, you've had that item for six months. If it's one day, if it's an extra week, if it's an extra two weeks, look, I get busy. We all get busy. I have my house is littered with seven to ten dollar items that I should have returned and I never did. <laughs> you know, you buy something you think is one thing, it just doesn't work right. I'm like, it's seven bucks. Am I going to waste my time? Yeah. Probably not. But but take care of your customer. I mean, that's always the bottom line. And I've had yes, I've had customers try and pull a fast one on me. They they tried it with the wrong seller. That's for damn sure because I can smell that out and figure it out. But take care of your customer, bottom line, and they'll take care of you because they'll come back. Like, m my assistant was out of town when I was in San Jose. And so my old assistant said, hi, yeah, I can come over and ship for two days for you. She sent out the, the wrong item to a customer. They were a brand new customer. They had one feedback. So they didn't even know the flow to contact me to say, hey, I got the wrong item. They opened uh, they opened a case in PayPal. I'm like, And I'm like, whoa. And... The one problem with the, with the PayPal case is I just got an email and it says, like, you know, so-and-so opened a case. And you got to log in and they don't tell you what item, what the problem is. That's one of my gripes about PayPal. But by the time I got home from San Francisco, it was late Sunday night. So I, I read it Monday morning. They're like, we got the wrong thing. It was a sports jersey. I need it by Thursday. My husband's going to a party to watch his favorite sports team. I immediately called her. I got her phone number off eBay. I immediately called her and said, my bad. Tell me which one you got. She told me. And I said, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to overnight this one tonight to you. It, it's already past that cutoff, but it'll go out Tuesday morning. It'll be at your house on Wednesday. You can wear it on Thursday. And she said, oh, thank you so much. And I said, hey, just a little heads up. What you did was perfectly fine and perfectly within your realm of things you can do as a buyer. But in the future, and I know you're new, in the future, if you just go to contact seller, I'm hoping most sellers are like me. It would have been easier for me to read your problem. I would, I would have not been able to take care of it quicker because I was out of town, but I would, have, I would have contacted you back quicker. So I kind of educated a buyer, but I did it in a very nice way. Not like, hey, you're a dick for opening a case against me. No, they had every right. They got the wrong product. But she was so happy. She, she, you know, she canceled the, uh, the thing, so I got all my money back. She left me great feedback, and I, and I got my customer their product. I took care of my customer. That's always the bottom line. 
Okay. DBZ Tiki says, I'll believe it when I see it on the return thing with eBay, but apparently it's there, right? If you watch if you watch the thing today, the I watched the flow. They, they showed how it works. Okay. It works just as easy pretty much as Amazon return flow. Okay. Uh, Paul Apollina says, I agree with Jason. Don't let one return anger you to, anger you to the point where it puts your whole business at a standstill. <laughs> it's pretty, I mean, that's a great point. Um, I've always been preaching that since day one as well. Um Hey, Let's Raken, say, if you want 200 likes, how about this? <laughs> if you get 200 likes, I will punch Raken in the face. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not shaving my beard. I don't, not for you, not for anybody. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just get your beard shaved, and then we put you in a tuxedo, okay? For the next <laughs> eBay conference. No, no, I'll wear it with no sleeves. <laughs> and then you can punch me in the face. <laughs> Peggy Smith, Rake and you'll never shave it. I've tried for years. Um, okay. That's my mommy. <laughs> Question real quick. This comes from Pittsburgh Mike, I want to say. I want to let me, let me... Okay. Why do I... Okay, it says, I have to list my clothing at ni 99 cents plus free shipping. Why is the market so dead in that scenario? Yeah, it's an inside joke. I know him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. I, none of these inside jokes, Rake, and get your little inside <laughs> joke club somewhere else, bro, your little clan of inside jokers. <laughs> um, gosh, now I'm, now I'm afraid to read any more of these comments. <laughs> Just watch out for Mike. He's got a lot of them. Anyone, anyone else, Raken? Would you like to scan the other 85 people that are in here? Yeah, I'm not trying to get punched <laughs> in the face tonight. So. Joke club. <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, never mind that one, Bonafide. He, it's an inside joke. Dude. <laughs> I'm going to have some words with you later, man. <laughs> God. No, but I'm being really honest with you. If you see someone else that's in your club, please let me know. All right? So that I don't, I don't answer any of their questions. Or I don't ask any of their questions. Okay. Um, Pittsburgh Mike always says, Jason, you bastard. Okay, this guy is definitely an inside club. Oh. <laughs> I'm from Cleveland. He's from Pukesburg, so, you know. Okay. All right. Um, I wonder what the weather's like in Pittsburgh, by the way. It always mystifies me when it's like 95 degrees here and low of like 80, that what it must be in the north on, we're almost in October. I'm just always so curious. That's Tomorrow's October. Is it like 50 up there now? Like, what is it like? I never know. It's so hot where I'm from. And it doesn't matter what the temperature is. He still lives in Pittsburgh. He's always doomed. <laughs> uh, okay, there you go. That's true. See, it's 60s, um, 60s and overcast right now. It's a gorgeous 89 right here. Gosh. It's probably like 82 here in Austin. Um, okay, so let's talk about, um, so a lot of remarks on, um, okay, la one last question. Here we go. And I know Jason T. Smith. Well, okay, maybe he does this. So Sa Sandy K., let's, let's start with Young. Um, that... Young, let's start with you real quick. Do you, do, do you block a buyer? Do you ever block a buyer on eBay, Young? Hardly ever. Like if I hear stories from other members or other people in the community saying that this guy is really bad, that he's done it repeatedly, then I'll do it, but I hardly ever do that. Okay. Uh, Raken, do you ever block anybody? When you were on eBay, did you ever block any people? Did you ever yeah, block well, people? Yeah, because when you have a YouTube channel, the haters like to come screw with you. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. So, a few. Okay. Not a lot. Not a lot. Just a few. Jason, when's the last time you blocked somebody? Yeah, I've only blocked one person in the last <laughs> maybe 10 years. And then early on, I did. And I don't remember now. Maybe it was emotional. Maybe it was true. Idiots. But I've only had one person try and pull, well, two people. Two people try to pull a fast one. I was the seller in one of the situations. I was the buyer in the other. And both of the other people called me out by name in their listing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eBay doesn't take too kindly to that. So not only do their listings get pulled, they got slapped. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just block those two. But that's only those two in the last 10 years. So, yeah. no, and I've had, I've had problem buyers, you know, you know, they're just too... Uh, too picky, but I'm like, well, whatever. Maybe they'll come back someday. Maybe they'll uh, have a have a nice glass of rum and chill out. I'm like, oh, I gotta buy some from Jason. Cool. I do have one question for you, Jason, because I know you deal with a lot of tiki Hawaiian shirts, all that kind of stuff. So you definitely have a theme to a bulk of the stuff that you put on eBay, correct? Yes or no? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So there's definitely a theme. So I can see the return buyer coming to you. Quite honestly, like you probably have one of the better tiki or Hawaiian stores on eBay currently right now. Now, for someone like myself or maybe Young or, you know, some of the people in the green room had just hustles everything, right, because they're watching so many YouTube videos and they're just like, I know what sells, and they hustle a bunch of stuff. Are we, 
I don't know if I've had many return buyers at all in my stint with eBay. And is if it is it one of those things like if you have a theme like a blazer store plus like you know a bunch of like formal wear and maybe formal shoes that you're more likely going to get a return customer or someone like me like that just hustles freaking everything known to man, I'm not going to get a return customer more than likely not, right? I haven't labeled my store or anything. I don't really care to, but like Jason talk to me about that real quick. You know, I, I get lots of return customers, and, and I, I might not be 100% accurate on this uh, because we didn't go over that much, but I'm pretty sure. So part two of what's cool and new at eBay is the seller hub, and the seller hub is going to give you all these uh, analytics and details and facts and figures, and I think, I'm pretty sure, one of the things they're going to tell you is uh, if this person is a return uh, buyer because eBay realized they were sitting on this mountain of data and this data that can help every one of their sellers be a better seller. And so what they're going to do is, as you're listing an item, so say I'm listing this iPhone, they're going to be like, okay, to sell this iPhone better, your competition that has sold it, use these keywords, so you'd be best to use them. And on the other end of that, if you got something that's sitting around for a long time, so if I have this stack of empty CD cases, and it says, you know, Jason, based on what you've got going right now, it's going to give you a percentage. There's a 3% chance you will sell those empty CD cases. But if you do this, this, and this, it'll bump your percentages up by a great amount. So better keywords, maybe a better shipping policy, whatever. But I'm pretty sure, and this is the one thing you cannot hold me to because I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure in that flow is going to be like, oh, hey, by the way, Raken's bought from you 10 times in the past. And then that, that, that that's the case. I'm going to throw some extra tiki goodies in there. Hey, thanks. Because I know some people keep track. And I, I recognize some names, but I have sent items to good, close friends, and I just ship so fast, I didn't even notice I was sending it to them. <laughs> then I get these emails, hey, Dick, you sent me the CD. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I didn't realize it was you. Sorry. Because oh. a lot of times, too, if my friends are buying some somewhat cheap for me, uh, I'm just like, I don't, know, I don't want your money. Here, have your money back. Buy something else. Because, you know, I, I won't do that like a $1,000 item. If a friend buys a $10 CD, I'm like, Buy me a drink next time you see me. If you see something you like and we're close, just say, hey, I want that. I'll send it to you. So wait, are we considered close, me and you right now, or no? Uh, pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. Pretty close. Once we get to close, then I'm going to go to your eBay store. And I'm gonna you, come, you come here, then you'll be closer. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I get it. All right. So it's it's close to you is like rum drinking buddies, I bet, in Vegas somewhere at some crazy place and waking up um, at some random part of the day. and Right? That, that becomes close, I bet, right? Yeah, but no, I don't wake up at random parts. I get up early, no matter how late we're out. So, oh wow, you be, you best be able to get up. You best be able to handle your liquor and get up early. Now, you oh, might yeah, need but... to take a nap, but I'm cool with that. Uh, but getting back to the Seller Hub, the Seller Hub is awesome. And here's my only warning to everyone listening: they're they're going to give you data. They're going to give you data that therapy gives you. Like, all right, this item sells better on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. They're going to give you graphs and charts and all this stuff. And my one fear is some people will go down the rabbit hole and never come back. So they go to list this, and they just spend hours looking at that data and mm. tweaking. And, you know, some items, I watch people who go, I need to know everything about this item. You know, it's a $20 item. You need to know about three things. Get it listed. <laughs> you know, you got a $1,000 chandelier. Yeah, take the time to know everything about it, to know how to pack it, to know the, the keywords you need, know, know your market. But, man, if you're selling us a $20 T-shirt, write what you see and stroll on to the next item. And so I have this fear that there's going to be people who see all that data and be like, yay, and then never come back. Now, the cool <laughs> thing, uh, like my mom's watching right now, and she's 73, and she's killing it on eBay, but that might be a little too much data for her. You can still be just not in the seller hub. You can still be in your just regular my eBay, just sell your stuff. You don't need to see all that data. They're not forcing it on you, but, man, if you want to sell better and you can comprehend it and absorb it and then spit it back and you'd be a better seller – then absolutely use it. This is starting to sound like Minority Report. You ever seen that movie? Oh, yeah. Like, all the data is like everywhere and they're using their hands and everything. This is starting to sound like that. But um, when you talk about this data and, uh, you know, it's it sounds it's sounding very item-specific, so would you be willing to say that this data is going to be available for every single item that you sell, much like if you're on YouTube and you're making videos, you can check the analytics of every single video down to the people that watch it that very day it'll give you all kinds of stuff. Is that the same way eBay is going with every single item in your store? You can click it and look at this uh, this data that you're talking about or no? 
Yeah, I would say probably, I would guess maybe 85%, because I think of items like, I've got tiki mugs in my collection that never show up. That if I threw it up for sale, they'd get me $1,000. So if a tiki mug gets you a grand, it ain't a common tiki mug. So there's going to be no data to base it on. They might throw out some generic tiki mug terms to you, but, you know, they're definitely talking more like, you know, if you sell this Chai Light CD, they're going to be like, all right, everyone else who sold that Chai Light CD, here's the terms they use. And here's a good example. All right, if you're using the database like Amazon where you plug in a UPC, it's going to give you a title. If you're selling media, CDs, DVDs, uh, VHS, whatever, the titles usually that are brought over from the database suck. I don't like them at all. They put a lot of, lot of information in you don't need, and they leave out information that would sell it better. So if you're selling CDs specially, make sure to, uh, if you can do it quick and just use the data they got, that's great, but make sure to look at your title. Because they'll put in uh, the year, and most times the year is not important, so there's four digits you don't really need. Sometimes it is, just on the item, but... Sometimes in a band, there is a member who became as big as the band by himself. So if you're selling a Van Halen CD from the Sammy Hagar era, I would absolutely have Sammy Hagar on the title. That kind of thing, and that won't happen. So um, make sure that when you're using these quick and dirties that you are... And that's what I think the data is going to tell you. Hey, Jay, uh, everyone who's selling this, this Van Halen CD, they're selling a better because Sammy Hagar's in the title. So I think that day is going to give you that information. Now, of course, we've seen examples, and when they start ramping it up and there's you know millions of us selling things and they're getting that data and pushing it back to us, we'll see how good it is. Not that I think it'll be bad, but you know some items might be better suited for absorbing and using that data than others. Okay. Sorry, um, that was a really long answer to it, really. <laughs> well, that's fine. It's totally fine. I want to uh, reach out to the comment feed real quick and just see what you guys think about number two now, which is like minority report, overload of data for every freaking item that you have in your store, just about every item, not every single one. But um, what is that, you know, how do you guys feel about that? Um, and then let's crack into number three. We're getting, we're getting close to the end of the show, but let's get into the third one, Jason. Do you know what the third one is? Yeah, the third one is the defects, and they've they've changed them. I I've, I found that the defects and your um, uh, feedback could be very subjectional. Where, you know, is it blue or is it aquamarine? Okay, that depends on your eyes. And so to catch a negative over something like that was somewhat unjust. And um, eBay saw that, and they want to protect the sellers. And so going forward, there's two defects. That's it, two. And and if you can't uh, if you can't be at zero, then you shouldn't sell online. That's pretty much the bottom line. Here's the two defects. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you have the item that you said you had and you sold? So in, in other words, can you ship the item? If you have to cancel an order because you don't have it, that's a defect. If you've got to cancel the order because you're not paying attention to how you're selling, you suck. Get out of here. That's it. That's one. Secondly, does eBay have to intervene if your customer has a problem? So if your customer says, hey, i got to return this, or hey, this didn't work right, or you said it was blue, it's orange, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> if you can deal with your customer without eBay having to, to step in, you, you can have a customer who basically says, hey, item was not as described, but if you deal with them and they are happy with your dealings, then no defect. So ship what you say you have and take care of your customer. If you can do those two things, you're going to be golden. Absolutely golden. Now, why are they trying to do? Okay, now let's let's talk about the conspiracy and speculation between all this, right? Okay, why make <laughs> it like that? Because are they trying to weed out certain types of sellers that just pay no attention to their listings and they just they fight with their with their buyers and all that kind of? They're just trying to get that out of their company completely. They they're trying to find the elite sellers, right, or the mid grade to elite. Not even, not even elite. I look, you know, my mom does, you know, maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks a month. I wouldn't call her elite, but Everything she sells, she has, and any customer she's ever had a problem with, uh, she's taught, she's taken care of. And so, what they're trying to get rid of is bad sellers. You know, any on uh, both platforms. You know, when Amazon expunges a bunch of shitty sellers and eBay does it, people cry and whine for days on every Facebook group. But if you spent that much energy that you did on crying and whining on selling better, you would have been removed. I mean, that's the bottom line. And so, like I said at the beginning, we all share space in the same mall. 
I don't want you selling next to me if you suck. Because if you suck, that just pushes the customers away. I'm, I'm great. But if they get to your store and they had a bad experience, they just turn around and leave. Okay. And so the bottom, two, the, the bottom line, and it's not, there's no, is it blue, is it aquamarine? Did you ship the item to the customer that you said you had? And if they had a problem, did you deal with it? That's pretty much cut and dry, you know? And, yeah, could there be small cases where, well, yes, of course. That's with anything in life. But for the most part, there's no more did we communicate well. We don't have to communicate. If you buy something from me, I send it. There's no communication needed. The communication is you gave me money, I gave you a product. That's all I need to do. I don't need to. I don't need to chat with you any more than that. Did you, uh, Reagan, back in the day when you were doing clothing on eBay, did you ever have people that were like, um, you said the shirt was white, but it's really beige, or like, did you ever have things like that go on, Reagan? Yeah, you know, with certain colors, it's difficult to take pictures, and especially when I was new and I was having trouble, uh, especially with like the reds, I always had trouble taking that color. Um, so once in a while, you know, they would throw up a fight, and my motto always was just take care of the customer and. You know what? They're always right because at the end of the day, you know, they're gonna win. They're gonna win. Um, so I would always just try to take care of them as best as possible. Just give them their money back, pay for their shipping, and you know, one lesson I learned is when you fight with them, you lose every single time, pretty much, because they're gonna get you either with the negative feedback or contact support. So for me, it was just taking care of them. Yeah, I always say like, you know, for the most part, take care, take care of your customers. But if you're gonna fight, if you have facts and you know you're right eBay will side with you. I'll but tell you, you better have not, your facts correct. You better have I, your facts and pictures and all that I, stuff. I'll tell you, 90% of the time, though, that a customer wanted to fight with me, I was usually wrong. So they're usually not going to put up a fight. <laughs> they're usually not going to put up a fight. Admit it. <laughs> so <laughs> so they're not out to funny. get you. <clears throat> Two things. Uh, negatives and neutrals will not count against your defect report anymore because yep. a lot of them. And you shouldn't get them. And, and look, I got one not too long ago. I researched a, uh, an unopened vintage product. Based on my research, I thought it was this, and it was actually this. And so when the customer got and opened it, it wasn't that. They left me a negative, well-deserved. I said, hey, uh, here's your money back anyway. My bad. Sorry. I, I didn't even bother to ask them to, to retract it because I deserve that negative. My research, my researching skills were not the best on that one. And, you know, talking in terms of color, uh, I, I'm doing a speech about uh, my current speech is about people's crappy pictures and their listings. You got to get them better. And I don't, you know, if you if you have the right light and a decent camera, and your camera can be your iPhone, they have really great cameras. You shouldn't have to adjust too much. But there are some things like red, like Reagan said, red's really tricky, and so is some greens. And one of the slides I showed, I don't know how well it'll show up here, but this is actually a green dress. And this person didn't take the time to correct it. I sold. Whoops, wrong way. I sold the same version. That's green. Hmm. I took the time to make it look like the green it actually is. And you don't need to do that with everything, especially if you have a nice setup. But I looked at those pictures, and I'm like, that is not green. But that dress is green. So I took the time, and other customers don't. I mean, sorry, other sellers don't. And I'm going to win out in terms of happier customers and customers who will come back. They're like, oh, Jason sold me a green dress. I got a green dress. You want to hear something really funny? I had a pair of Hunter boots that were I thought were red, and I listed them as red, and someone bought them. And they, they got with me, and they're like, this is orange. I'm like, oh, send them back. So they send them back, and I list them as orange. I ship them out, and the person says, these are red. And I'm like, what is going on, dude? This is crazy. So then I listed them, I think, and I was like, red slash orange, and then the person held them, whoever bought them that time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look, that everybody's like, eyes are different, and every monitor, every iPhone, every iPad is different too, a smidge. So <clears throat> that's why I don't get too specific on colors. I'm not like looking at the 64 box of crayons and going, this is like, you know, aquamarine. No, it's blue because at least I'm a little <laughs> bit, you know, you know, it's just blue. But you don't want to be so specific that when the customer gets it, they're like, this is not salmon. This is coral. Hey, Jason, have you ever experimented with video in your listings at all? I've seen a few uh, listings like that. What are your thoughts on that? I know it takes a lot of time. Oh, uh, yes, and, and you're wrong, Reagan. It does not take a lot of time. It is very quick to do video, and here's what. If you need video, and video is typically, typically for items that move, that sing, that dance, that fart, that whistle, whatever, you should not take longer than 15, 20 seconds because people are very ADD. My photo mm -hmm. studio is down the hall. 
I take a 15 second video on my phone and here's the big key hold your phone this way not this way yep this way fills up your screen but when you mm. when you do 15 seconds and you click upload to YouTube by the time you walk down the hall it's already there <clears throat> go grab and stick it in it's pretty quick Video is great, sells things because no one else does it. And, and here's two more tips. If you have something that lights up, do some of that video with the lights off. I was doing a Christmas wreath where there was a train choo chooing around the wreath and the lights were blinking. And I was shooting the video, my sister was standing next to me, and I had this idea and I looked at him and I went, I went like this. He real or she realized I wanted the lights off. She clicked the lights off. The <laughs> last three seconds are showing the lights blinking. <clears throat> a, no one ever did a video of this item, and, and it wasn't selling, and B, no one did it with the lights off. I sold mine real quick, and nobody else was selling theirs. Now, the other, I've used the video for two items that didn't move. I sold a very rare record, the record that was both the worst record of all time, oh. and you can't really find the music anywhere. So I put it on the record player, and I just shot a video of about a minute, because I wanted them to hear the song, of the cover. So you can hear the record playing, and you're seeing the cover. And the other time, <clears throat> I sold a high-end watch, and I had just done the listing, and this was years ago when putting videos were really tough. Uh, as I was about to list it, I had an idea. I said to my wife, I go, hey, come outside for a second. It was a woman's watch, very small. My wife is very small. She's five foot, small wrist. I said, hey, I'm going to do a video. So I did a video of her going like this for like 12 seconds. Just turn her wrist. And the woman who bought it, she paid me $15,000. And she said, she wrote, when she got it, and she liked it, and she wrote back and said, hey, I bought that watch only because of your video. I could tell wow. that woman's wrist was the same size as my wrist. But had you not done that, I never would have realized it because Ooh. I took the pictures just on, like, you know, a nice little table kind of thing. Nice. That's Great tip. Right there, that's, man. Really, that's a really good tip, man. I like that. Very cool. Um, okay, so real quick, because we're getting to the very, very end of this show. Jason, real... How can people connect with you behind the scenes? Because you do a lot. You do a lot of helping behind the scenes, and you're part of your own Facebook group and all that kind of stuff. So um, let's let's start. You know, telling people how they can get in contact with you. Maybe Twitter. Maybe Facebook. Maybe Periscope. Go ahead and tell people how they can get a hold of you. All right. So my, my new group is a thrifting board. Here's my shirt right here. Bum, bum, bum. And we kind of decide to theme it out. And the theme is: Are you in the rough waters of e-commerce and need some help? Well, come into my group, and we have plenty of lifeguards that will help you. So I'm obviously the head lifeguard, and we don't have admins anymore. We only have lifeguards. And we have the Tiki Hut for new sellers who can just – they can chat amongst themselves and, and, and get some help. And and so that's the thrifting board on Facebook, real easy to find. Uh, if you want to just message me on Facebook, it is Facebook slash Tiki Pug, T-I-K-I-P-U-G. That's me. I got My house is full of tikis and pugs, so it's pretty easy to remember. And uh, I am more than happy to help anyone. Uh, I, I'm on Twitter. It's at Tiki Pug. I don't do it as much. Uh, but Facebook is my, my home and where you can find me all day, every day, while I'm listening and doing other stuff. And I love helping people. I always have. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if they're close to the Las Vegas area, don't you do Savers meetups and stuff like that some here and there? Yeah, I've been on the road so much, I haven't done much in my own hometown. I was just in New York City. I'm leaving next week for Chicago. Two weeks later, I'm going to be in Palm Springs. So I'm always all over the place. So if you see me coming to your neck of the woods, I'm always having classes. Right now, I have, I'm having a class in Chicago on the 15th of October. It's got one spot left. And if I get a little overflow, I will have a second class. And so if you see me coming to your neck of the woods, even if it's you know, relatively close, come. Come. You know, you, you'll learn so much from being in the store with somebody who's been in the stores forever that uh, you it will more than pay for itself a thousand times over. Who runs your business when you're gone, by the way? I have a great assistant. He uh, he is a wannabe rock star, and I was a little uh, <laughs> apprehensive about hiring him. His mom's like, my son needs a job. I'm like, all right. And he's been so great. He, he is here Monday through Friday, uh, 9 to uh, 1, and he does all my listing and all my shipping. When I'm not here. He runs the whole operations, takes care of my doggies, and uh, it, it keeps the it keeps the the uh, trainer rolling. It's pretty cool, man. You guys, you have someone to basically you just source the stuff and you throw it on the table, or you already kind of give him keywords, or you know what it is, kind of, or what? Yeah, he, he he has learned a lot. Like I, I fell into like 200 sports jerseys about a month ago, and that's the one problem. He doesn't know sports at all. Like that ain't his thing. 
So we first had to teach him this is a basketball jersey, this is a football jersey, <laughs> oh this God. is a hockey jersey. And then, you know, he, he was working on two Brett Favre jerseys today. He didn't even know who Brett Favre is. He's a rock and roll kid. Sports ain't his thing. And uh, you guys are all kind of young, but back in the 80s, there was a basketball player. Uh, there was a basketball player for um, the Cleveland Cavaliers. His name was World Be Free. When they came out, they like, World Be Free. And so he was working on all these jerseys that had normal names. Uh, Mark Price, Deion Sanders. And I saw the World Be Free jersey coming up, and I go, his head will explode. And so luckily I was sitting here when he got to it, and he's looking at the name. It's just trying to, like, the guy's first name is World, and his middle name is the letter B. <laughs> so he's got this great education. And so it, it's fun for me, too, because when you work for me, you get paid to learn, really. All my assistants have learned a ton. So they got paid to do their work, obviously, but they could go on, on their own and uh, have this great knowledge of stuff that was way outside their realm. Well, that's pretty cool, man. I would have never known that, by the way. I'm not a sports nut myself. Um, hey, Raken, real quick, or maybe Yong, um, what do people need to do about this sh- with the like button for this show um, to ensure that we get guests just as great as Jason, and when he goes to the next big eBay event, he'll come and report back to the green room. But how do people help us out, Raken, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we, we want you to drink plenty of water, exercise, you know, but we also want you to burn some calories and take that finger and hit the like button. You're, you're, you're going to burn approximately half a, half a calorie, so, um, you know, it's what the doctor prescribed. That's what I call it, man. Skinny <laughs> finger syndrome, man. If you hit the like button enough times in our, in our hangouts and our channels, you're going to get skinny finger, so that's what it's all about. Do it for world be free. That's right. One um, of the guys in the chat went to middle, a junior high with him. How weird. Whoa, that's oh, weird. What? No way. Really? Oh, Who, went, went, to, went to his junior high. Not went with him, but went to his junior high. But still, <laughs> that's still weird enough. I bring up a very obscure basketball player from the 80s, and he's like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> That is crazy. Small world, man. Okay, so you guys know now how to, uh, you know, a little bit more about the new things with eBay. And uh, rest assured that if anything ever, you know, comes uh, new, that Jason would be one of the first people to know about it. So you definitely got to follow him. Um, let's, let's let's drop that, uh, that follow one more time, Jason. How can they find you? The Thrifting Board on Facebook, right? Yep, the Thrifting Board on Facebook, uh, and or just hit me up on Facebook, uh, Facebook slash Tiki Pug, because there's way too many Jason Smiths in the world. Tiki Pug, Tiki and the dog, right? Tiki Pug, yep. right? Yep, okay. T-I-K-I-P-U-G. I got three pugs running around here. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll let, you know, we always want to keep with our obligations of one hour. So uh, we'll let Jason go here in a second. But thanks for watching the show, and uh, we'll catch you on the next Green Room Hangout next week, Wednesday, Green Room Hangout number 12 of Season 2, and we will see you then. Thank you so much for joining, and we'll talk to you on the next show. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.